Arizona Days Professional Development Group, CDPD. I believe we are live. Yes, we are live. And today, this evening, I am here with Maggie Becker, and she's going to talk to us. Her presentation is, I have a LinkedIn profile, now what? But before Maggie begins that presentation, I would like her to just tell us a little about herself. I'm going to mute myself, and here we go. Hello, everyone. How exciting. I'm happy to be here virtually with all of you. My name is Maggie Becker. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I have worked for about the past 12 years in higher education, working predominantly in career services, also in academic advising, running a tutoring center in academic resources. And my my passion is really to help others see their potential, communicate their value, and navigate you know, different personal and professional goals that they have. There's nothing that I find to be more enjoyable than being able to connect with someone and support them as they navigate through the job search process, career exploration, and just growing themselves personally and professionally. I myself have made a career change. So when I graduated undergrad, I went into finance uh, because I loved Excel. Um, and then through that experience, I was helping all my friends find um, career opportunities. And someone told me that it was a career path. And the, the reason I share this with all of you is because we sometimes don't know all of the different career options. And so talking with someone like myself or others that frequently share career advice in um, CPDBD in the group in Corona Days Professionals uh, is a great way to um, learn about career paths that you might not have even known. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started because I think LinkedIn is an amazing tool. And a lot of times people will say to me, all right, you know, I made a profile on LinkedIn, now what? And when we go through the profile together, there's usually a few things that I can call out and highlight um, to help others elevate their profile. So some, some things that people just don't think of naturally. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to share my screen with you all, um, just because I did some screenshots so that way you have some examples here. So the first thing I wanna go ahead and get started is taking inventory of your profile on LinkedIn. And so the very first thing that I am going to recommend that you do is think about using the featured section. This is a brand new section in LinkedIn. You can find it um, just below the About Me section. And if you click on the little plus set, sign, you can see a few of these different options. Now, I myself have uploaded some of the recent um, recordings that I made for work, highlighting different career advice uh, for recent graduates. I wanted to showcase my communication skills, my presentation skills, and so I was able to link directly to YouTube. Um, so if you want to share your own expertise, that might be, you know, teaching someone how to do something, uh, presenting a persuasive pitch, anything really that would showcase your verbal communication skills, which is actually one of the top 10 skills that employers are actively looking at when they review your resume. Consider creating your own YouTube channel and recording and sharing yourself presenting or going over something, and then you can link it here. Say you keep your own blog, um, maybe you organize things or have gone through remodeling a, uh, a piece of property or something. Think about you know, maybe linking your blog to this if you wanted to show off you know, your abilities, skills, or just a little bit about your personality. The part with media, though, is a piece that I think a lot of us um, overlook. So for example, if you had a photo of you on the job, you might upload it here 
and talk a little bit about um, the scenario and what you've done. Let's say you wrote a report, created an infographic, designed some social media campaigns. Um, maybe you are interested in making your next position be some graphic design or visual or writing. Use the media uploads to upload it. Now, if you worked on it with someone else, it's always a good idea to check in with them and make sure that they're comfortable with you sharing it. If, you, if the work um, was from a previous employer, you might wanna think about also getting permission or redacting some of the pieces that might make it proprietary. And so one of the things that a lot of people overlook, and I want you all to go back and try to find one thing even to connect with your featured section is highlighting and showing off your work. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next one, but I'll take questions. And if there are any questions, you know, I can always go back and even show live if that's helpful. The second one that I wanna call out is under the add profile section, projects. So let's say you did something on your own time. Um, maybe you used Ancestry DNA and kind of researched your, your history. Um, maybe you did a volunteer project, um, you know, in the, in the community, um, whatever it might be. Think about adding a project here because you can go into detail. A project wouldn't be something that you did on your job um, that would go under your experience section, but maybe you did a side project, um, you know, or took on an extra initiative um, in your job, then it might go on projects or just thinking about things that you do that might not fall into a place. If you're a recent graduate, you would I would recommend that you use the project section to put in something that you did in a class. So rather than just listing a class name that you took, um, or even maybe you did a Excel class on Coursera or EDX, and then went back and organized um, or graphed something on your own, put the class name, the um, organization, the dates, and then describe the project. It's such a neat way to go into more detail. Now, if you look here, I highlighted or rather underlined skills because I'm going to talk more about it in a little bit. And I just wanted to show you where I got to it. The other side um, recommendation would be change your headline. So I used a turquoise square under my name to highlight this. Now, I've been doing a lot of research and following experts on this. And I think historically, a lot of people would use their most recent job title here. Or they would say searching for, um, looking for if they were in the job market. However, the um, information I've been following recommends, think about what you wanna be known for. Think about either job titles, um, actions that you wanna perform, things you wanna be known for, and put that in here. It's a great way to also um, position yourself as an expert, or if you're looking to transition industries or careers, use this to sell and tell your story about what you want to be known for. All right, so I mentioned skills. Um, so what I, my third option, or rather option, but advice for profiles. So the first one was using featured, the second one was adding projects along with updating your headline. The third one is skills. Now, I like to recommend that you look at at least 10 different people on LinkedIn who are in roles that interest you and look at what their skills are because you can only have three being your primary dominant ones that appear before someone has to click see more. And so what you can see under number one, you can see my top two skills are career counseling and job searching. However, if I was looking to transition or go into a different area, I might not want those to be the top. I might want recruiting or leadership. 
And so I can always click on the add new skill button or the little pencil. And then there are pins next to the top three. And I could just drag and drop those pins and move up and down the ones that I want to be seen as my three prominent skills. If you click on adjust endorsements, I do recommend having these turned on as yes, as it's a great way that people that might be on LinkedIn, um, you know, every now and then it might say recommend, do you want to endorse so and so for a skill? If you want to be able to have people see that you want to be endorsed, make sure that's on yes. And then I really like the show me suggestions because you never know what might be out there. Now, if you have, um, you know, people that you once worked with or worked on a project or volunteered, you might consider connecting with them, of course, and talking about what's going on, asking them for advice in your career journey, wherever you are, but also saying to them, you know, you're working on your LinkedIn profile, um, you know, you're trying to highlight a few skills, if you went in and endorsed them for a few skills, might they take some time to endorse you for a few skills? You might even talk through which ones you want to be endorsed. A lot of people that are just getting started using skills will find that when they connect with people that they know, they go and endorse them for everything. But is everything really what you want to be known for? Think about, again, going back to people in the roles that you want what are the skills that they have as a priority or in that top three, even you know, a few other skills and think about aligning your profile with experts in the field so that you can be seen in this same light as those in that area. So those are my three profile tips. Now I wanna talk more about moving to being engaged on LinkedIn. And so a lot of people will say, oh, I'm active on LinkedIn. Well, what does that mean? And they'll say, oh, I liked what someone posted. And I said, okay, how many other people liked that same post? And they might say, you know, a few dozen to maybe a few hundred if it's a um, expert in a field. And then I say, okay, how many people have commented? And that number is always significantly less. But when people are, using LinkedIn to its fullest. They're looking at and reading through the comments. And so it's a great way for you to be engaged. It's also a good way when a future employer looks you up on LinkedIn, which they will do, and looks at your activity. If they just see a series of thumbs up or hearts or uh, celebrations, whatever your favorite emoticon might be on LinkedIn, um, they'll be like, okay, this person's active, but let's make you be seen as engaged. So how to do that? Okay, so I talked a little bit about in your engagement, um, updating your profile, your headline, your featured, your project and skills. Now use this to search for future options, okay? Or for future articles, for things to follow. So first what I wanna say is, Go to your skills and then search for them. Go to your projects and then search for them. And then let's go and think about what are those hashtags that are out there and start following them. Just help you go ahead and get engaged. And I'm gonna challenge you all this week to get engaged with at least one. So here are some uh, types of people that I recommend to search for to then help you be at your engagement to be a little bit easier. And so thinking about and actually searching. And I think um, what I'm going to do after this session is actually go on the Facebook page and post some articles that I have found that give great advice on who to, who to follow. Follow influencers, industry experts, and then comment on what they're posting. Pose a question. Follow hashtags. Did you know that there are hashtags in LinkedIn, just like there are on Twitter? Follow them. See what's getting posted. Look at other hashtags that are being tagged with it. This is going to help fill up your feed and give you so many great options and ideas for engaging. 
All right. Now, when it comes to actually sharing your expertise and opinions, this is an example of what I would do. So Madison Butler is one of the career experts that I follow on LinkedIn. And so I might see a post that she has and add an additional comment or question. Maybe something resonated with me and it was a new way of thinking about advice. I might write that. I might look at a hashtag and I might even ask advice. I see that you tagged this hashtag. Would you recommend any other hashtags that I should follow? Maybe you yourself are going to start the engagement of all engagements on LinkedIn and actually start and do your own post. Share a photo or a video of you even asking for advice. Um, or just write a post and comment about something. Written communication, as I mentioned similarly to verbal communication, are in the top 10 skills that employers are actively looking for. And your engagement and writing and reflection, questions and advice on LinkedIn is such a great way for you to share and show off your communication skills as well as your expertise. Now you might be saying, well, I don't know that I'm an expert in anything. You are, own it, believe in yourself, and know that you have a lot to offer. So this middle post here by Christy Bonner, another um, expert on LinkedIn that frequently posts, shared a little bit about what she looks for in a candidate. And why I like this is because it's so true. They can teach you how to do the job, but what they can't teach you is to be motivated, to be a team player, um, to be really excited and, and passionate about something. So if you see an expert in your field, try being and expressing your passion by commenting on something that they said. I worked with a student who told me that she's been researching a topic since she was in seventh grade and homesick from school one day. And so she's acquired all of this uh, information and research. And so I encouraged her to follow experts in her field and then share some of those tidbits that she learned. Another great way to kind of be engaged. Now these here are some of my favorite hashtags to get you looking and seeing who's being active on LinkedIn because it's gonna make your engagement a little bit easier. When you're trying to build up your connections um, and please feel free to connect with me. And in the notes section, when we connect, mention you know that you, you saw me tonight and maybe something new that I shared or that you want some help with or that you're gonna give a try. But I digress. These here are hashtags and there's so many more to follow because they're gonna appear in your feed. And these are hashtags by people active on LinkedIn and it's gonna be a great springboard for you to practice getting more and more engaged until you feel super confident um, or are ready to make your own post or article. All right, so I talked a little bit about some of those um, pieces. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and so what I really want to, to reiterate is Update your profile with something new that I mentioned, and be engaged, comment, post, ask probing questions. Sometimes when I see posts, it makes me think of an article I once read. I've used, um, I don't know if anyone is familiar with Pocket, but a coworker of mine shared it with me, and it's a way to bookmark different articles and categorize it. So I've bookmarked a whole bunch of articles and things that I followed. And sometimes when I see a post on LinkedIn, it makes me think of that article. I go to that pocket, find the article, and then post it with an article. That's a nice, easy way to ease into, um, into that engagement. Um, but I wanted to kind of hit the pause button and, and check in and see people, um, what people's questions are. And I, see um, a few questions. So I am going to answer uh, some of these questions because they are fantastic. And I can't thank you enough um, for, uh, for posing them. Um, so one question was, what would you say to someone using LinkedIn after many years who feels like they're not quite getting anywhere? Yes. 
uh, yes, yes, I know exactly what you're feeling and thinking. And what's so hard is when you are using LinkedIn, you are like planting the seeds to your future. But that also is a little frustrating because right now you might be in a situation where you need and want a job. And so it's great that I'm making these connections for the future, but what about right now? And what I, what I recommend to that is the power of informational interviewing and asking for advice. People love talking about themselves and people love when you think of them as an expert. And what I would do is find the people in the roles that you want right now. So not super far up, you know, because the people in the roles that you're interested in are the ones that are always going to give the best advice because they're in it. Plus, they're always going to know when an opportunity becomes available before a hiring manager tells human resources, mm -hmm. who then posts it on the website. That could literally take a month or longer. But by building and connecting with people in the roles that you have, you're also going to know when an opportunity becomes available early on. But I think I went down a little mini um, sidetrack train. That was and I'm going to go back to the original, uh, original question. And so when you reach out to people um, on LinkedIn, ask if they would be willing to spend 25 minutes on Zoom, Skype, the phone, or email. Now, I would order it in that way because ideally, you want to get visually in front of someone if you can. Um, because being able to make that face-to-face -face connection, they're going to remember you more. If it's a phone call, they're going to remember you more. An email, you're going to get put into the lots of emails and inquiries that they might have. And so, and 25 minutes is such a great number because it's less than a half hour. It's a unique number. They're like, oh yeah, I can set aside 25 minutes. And that's just the introductory conversation. Because if it goes well, you're managing the time. You see you're at 20 minutes. You might say to them, I'm loving this conversation. And I was wondering if we might be able to set up another one in about two weeks and see what they say. Now, if you are making that first ask, always give them an out uh, because we don't know what people are dealing with right now, especially um, in the current climate. And so I've recently seen and I really like a, a kind of like a disclaimer at the end that says, I understand if now is not a great time um, and hope that, you know, please let me know and we can always reconnect later. That's a really great disclaimer and shows that you're courteous about their time. Now, when you're talking to people in the roles that you want, that you meet and connect with on LinkedIn, ask them for advice on LinkedIn. What do they do on LinkedIn? What do they recommend for someone getting started? Um, it goes back to that giving advice and it goes back to hearing how someone in your field or your dream field uses LinkedIn. I also recommend set specific goals. And so I have, you can see like my, um, my planner and um, I tend to write big so I do my check boxes for the whole week and what I tell people is think of three things you want to do in LinkedIn between now and next Tuesday make little check boxes so start small because you're learning a new skill and it takes I don't know how many hours or times I know there's a quote out there with it but I just can't remember it um, but setting small goals and it's going to get easier because the first time it might make you feel like you are bearing your soul to the world of LinkedIn to be engaged, but you're not. That's what people do. And in fact, the more stories you share, the more people are going to remember you because they remember stories more than facts and they remember how you left them feeling more than facts again. Um, and so do what you're comfortable with and start small. Like for me, I know one of my weaknesses is that I'm an extremely private person and it takes me a while to open up. And so when I first started on LinkedIn, yeah, I was liking things. And then I would say to myself, all right, Maggie, for 
for every five things you like, you have to post something or you have to show your sample work to kind of give proof because anyone can say that they're a great writer, but unless someone actually sees it, am I, am I not? Um, and so that's why I like linking to that features section um, and things, things like that. Um, and then you need to do what you are comfortable with and um, go with your own comfort uh, because you need to be true to yourself and your brand and what you have to offer and your authentic self is coming through in that LinkedIn. And you don't want to be pretend to be someone else you want because then you're going to be uncomfortable when you get that job and feel like you have to be keeping up, you know, this person that you crafted of your own. Just know deep down that you have, every one of us has so much to offer and we don't have to be someone else or do it a specific way, we have to do it like our own way. Um, okay, I wanna ask another one. Do you think people who have obtained degrees are most likely to be noticed or is it more about technical skills and experience? Honestly, it's all about the experience and it doesn't matter where the experience comes from. So let me talk and give an example kind of goes back to that story thing. People have told me, as I've looked to grow, Maggie, don't worry if you don't have budget experience. Yep. You're never gonna not get a job because you don't have budget experience. I went to this leadership program that develops future, um, it's the HERS Institute in higher ed, if anyone is familiar with it. And it um, ends up preparing some um, presidents of colleges out there, uh, women presidents. And they said throughout the whole thing, don't worry if you don't have budget experience, it's never gonna hold you back. I believed it, but I like experience. So I looked for an opportunity to volunteer and get budget experience, right. which is why I became treasurer of my condo, um, because I wanted budget experience. And so I didn't have it anywhere else until that point, but it was a way for me to go about doing that. And let me tell you right now, there are so many great nonprofits out there and opportunities to volunteer, to develop a skill that you might want to learn. And so volunteer to develop that skill and then add that to your LinkedIn profile under the projects or experience. It's really however you want to sell it. Um, I could go on about how you could retell one experience in five different parts of your LinkedIn, three different ways on your resume, you know, um, but I, I won't go down that path. So think about if you can um, volunteer. I know that idealist.org and also volunteer match are two great sites that talk about um, volunteer opportunities. And again, I'll go back on our Facebook page and post some of these links afterwards, um, but consider volunteering if you don't have an experience. The other thing I would say going back to experience and skills is using the language of whatever your career goal is. And so I like to use the word or think about teaching. If I'm going for a job as a teacher or in an education setting, yes, I want to use the word teaching in my experience. But if I'm going, let's say, for a training coordinator or within in a different industry, then instead of using teaching and education, I wanna use training and development. Um, let's say I coached um, you know, uh, someone's sports team, then instead of using the word coach, I might use the word trained. And so it goes back to experience and skills and it's all in how you sell it and angle it. It's also one of my favorite things to do. So if you ever wanna brainstorm um, like, how to phrase something or um, what's out there, we can also always go through it. Um, now, if you've gone ahead and recently got an education or a certificate or, or something, then yes, talk about that and prioritize it because that's what's new to you and something new that you acquired. Just like I tell um, a lot of people, there are so many free courses out there. Go take free courses. You know, I personally don't think you need to spend that $40 to get some certificate um, that proves that I took that class. 
in my communication and what I write about on my LinkedIn, or I'm gonna do some fake fictitious project to show off what I learned, um, that's gonna tell more than, you know, paying extra money when I might not have that financial resources right now. Um, and so again, if you've recently got a certificate or a degree, yes, promote that. Usually after about two years of acquiring that degree, it's gonna move down towards the bottom. The other thing I think about is there is a reason why LinkedIn designers designed and ordered LinkedIn the way that they do. And if you think about it, your experience is higher than your degree. Yep. It's because it goes back to the experience and it's all about that. Um, so. Love it. All right, let's see. I love these questions. I could just answer career questions all day long and be happy <laughs> as a clam. Um, where do I go on LinkedIn? Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what, what's the okay? question, Maggie, the for the question, people who don't know oh, it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> just, just for people who don't know it. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Oh my goodness. Okay. The question is, how do I actually find people at my level? Like, you know, we talk about, and I did just talk about all these experts <laughs> and gurus and mm -hmm. um, how do I find people in the role that I have? Okay. So I am going to share my screen. Is that okay? okay sure. Just share it. Really, Let me stop my video I, and share your screen. Mm -hmm. I just really like um, examples. Okay. I'm going to go to my LinkedIn, and I should have had this up in advance. It's okay. So forget for LinkedIn to load. Okay. So. My, the very first thing that I would do is let's say there is a company that you would love to work for um, and you are curious. And so let's see, what's a company that I might be? Danette, have you heard um, companies that people are really, like, really excited or interested in? Google. <laughs> yeah, Google. <laughs> Google, okay. Of course, Google. All right, so I'm gonna go to the Google company website. And so again, I'm gonna type in, oops, that's Google, not Google. Google. <laughs> and I'm gonna go to the one that says company and internet. And then I'm gonna go down to people. And now these here, I can see um, all the different people that work at Google. There's a lot, but let's say, that I'm really interested in, let's say project manager type of roles. And so I search and now I see all the different people that have project managers. And maybe I am really interested in the New York City area. So I'm gonna narrow it down there. And so now I start to see all these different people. Now, a few things. If I were to click on this person, it will take me to their profile. Now, here is someone that I wish had shared a little bit more about themselves so I could see if their um, job roles were in fact what interests me. But then what I would do is I would go to more, I would click on connect, and I would add a note and I would see something along the lines of, hi, Christy, I'm exploring career options and see that you're a project manager. Would you be willing to connect with me and tell me a little bit more about your career path um, and answer some of my questions? Now it's hard because it's 300 characters. So I would say, perfect uh, little message. Um, I know that there are so many people in our group that would be willing to give you feedback on it too, myself included, but that would be a way to kind of go through and search for people. Now, if you graduated from, let's say, um, a college or even high school, you, they have an alumni office that you might reach out to and ask about connecting with alumni. Um, similarly, you might put in um, 
your high school and then see everyone that you went to high school with and click on alumni and do the mm -hmm. same thing in here by searching by keyword. Now I have found um, that it takes me about seven to 10 people to reach out and get one to say yes. Hmm. And I say that not to discourage you, but just to give you quantitatively some numbers and set expectation. Because I've had people be like, you know, I reached out to three people. I love that you reached out to three people, but let's get it closer to 10 to get a return on one. Now let's say you're too far removed from the person to actually access their information on LinkedIn. Log out of your LinkedIn account and do a Google search with, it usually will show you their first name, last initial, and then whatever you searched for. So it might be Maggie B, career, um, Wheaton College, because that's where I work now. And you should be able to see their public profile and then be able to connect with them. And so that's a little bit if they are too far out of, too far out of your, your network. Um, if you oh, don't know a company to target, search in that search bar at the top by the job title, hit enter and go from there. Um, if you see that you both know someone and you want to reach out and ask someone to make an introduction, um, use the people that you're connected with to say, I see that you know so-and-so, would you introduce me? That's the reason LinkedIn initially existed, is to show, you know, <laughs> and that's also why they have those connections, first degree, second degree, third degree. Don't be afraid to use that. Um, it also makes the person feel important, like, oh my goodness, I'm connecting these people. Um, so that's another really great way. Okay. So I'm going back and looking to see what questions. Um, I, and thank you, uh, for the, <laughs> for the call out on my thoroughness with my answers. I am detail oriented, um, and very <laughs> step it. by step. Um, but it's great. It's and that's good what's information. really great about all these sessions is because some people, you know, um, tell more stories and you can pick up and learn. Some people are more big picture. Some people are more tactical step by step. And so checking out the different speakers and presenters, you're going to find someone that you connect with and resonate with and then follow up with them. Yeah. Um, are there any other? Don't, I don't have any on Facebook. But I'm sure I do. As soon as we log off, I'll see them. Right. That's what happens <laughs> every time. But I have a couple of things. So first, I, I wanted to remind everyone that, um, that Maggie is uh, an assistant director or associate director? Assistant director. An associate director. Associate director of the Career Services Department at Wheaton College. So she's, she works with students all the time who are <laughs> looking for work who are you know so she is a resource and she's in this group she's a cdpd member and she is a friend and a supporter of cdpd so if you have questions definitely reach out to maggie mm -hmm. uh and remember to connect with her on LinkedIn. So I will drop her LinkedIn profile, but you cannot connect with her blind, right? You have to say something when you connect with her. So connect with Maggie. All right. So I just had to throw that out there. Uh, oh, and plug for CDPD. You can follow our hashtag. It is called hashtag CD. <laughs> you can follow it on LinkedIn. Okay. <laughs> we have like four followers. All right. I am, well, you are going to have five. I'm going <laughs> to follow it and start using it. And yes. Thank you. All right. So I have I'm embarrassed our, I didn't know. No, it's okay. I don't, I don't, you know what? I have to remember to actually say it. Uh, whoever that is, whoever's out there on our live, if you have any questions, Maggie just took a number of questions from the Zoom audience. But if you are on Facebook and you have some questions, please drop them. So I have our three questions that I ask everyone. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Does something, does something else pop up on the Q&A? There was another question. Okay, go ahead. Do that one. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
all right, I'm looking for a role and I'm also passionate about getting LinkedIn with people who are willing to assist with helping schools that require funding or help with charity work. I'm the PTA secretary living offshore and wondering if being linked in with more people in my area. Using the location feature in LinkedIn can be helpful if you're looking for a specific area. Um, there's also, um, I find looking at people who share um, causes that you're interested in because you can search for and have causes in LinkedIn. I would also search in LinkedIn by PTA and see other people who have shared and promoted that they themselves are on PTA and then um, reaching out for advice, support, especially with um, so much uncertainty going into this school year and so many tough decisions that people are being forced to make. You might use and lead with that PTA commonality and then troubleshoot ideas or get recommendations. Um, now what becomes a little tricky is if the organization matches both of your interests or needs. So both a volunteer opportunity and a potential job. And that's the hard part about LinkedIn too, is that you really can only have one like, you only can really spotlight one brand of yourself. You might spotlight a few different parts of it. Um, and so you might need to make a decision of, okay, am I reaching out to this person for, you know, um, career advice or um, PTA and charity support work? Now, I would recommend probably leading with I'd love to do an informational interview with you. That's like the golden buzzword, informational interviewing. Because you don't want to ask and reach out to someone who you might not know about um, forwarding my resume along. Because they don't know you and they don't know the type of worker you are. And not everyone is willing to put their own self on the line for someone that they haven't yet gotten to know. But if you lead with, I want a conversation. I want to do an informational interview and learn more about you. Then you can filter in and ask all your questions. And what I do when I prepare for those is I come up with a list of questions and I break it down into sections. And so I might have some career questions. I might have some community questions. I might have, you know, in this case, questions around um, charity or uh, PTA type of work. And so that way I'm making sure I get asked all my questions. Um, and then I also prioritize them to make sure that I'm asking the ones that are most highest on my list. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you, Danette. What are those other questions? Okay. So, well, you have one here, but I think I'm going to suggest, Rhonda, you and <laughs> Maggie to connect. Because these are very specific questions you have, okay? So I'm going to suggest that you connect with Maggie on LinkedIn, and then you guys follow up. Okay, perfect. So I do have, before my three questions, I have a question because you said earlier in, Maggie, that uh, the top two, in the, I'm sorry, top in the top ten, of the skills that employers are looking for were written and verbal communication. Can you tell us a couple more of those that um, that are in that top 10? Yes. Okay. Um, so problem solving is another one. All right. Teamwork, initiative, um, usually something around quantitative analysis. Um, usually the lowest is actually technology because they can wow. teach, they can teach technology. you technology. Mm -hmm. um, and if you think about it, the top 10 skills are all um, of your transferable skills that you can literally apply from everything. But verbal, written communication, teamwork, uh, initiative, problem solving, quantitative analysis, those are usually um, the ones that are in the top. Okay. One thing okay. that I also like to do or recommend is take 10 of your dream job postings. Don't focus on location. 
then go to a free word cloud generator and paste in all the requirements. So not like the full job description, but the requirements part. And then the bigger the word, the more it's repeated. And so ah. therefore it's a skill and something to really uh, leverage and um, integrate. There's also a great website called carmen.co. And yeah, it's carmen.co, mm -hmm. not C-O-M. I'm going to put it there here right now. Perfect. But... And what I love is that if you click on benchmark skills and then type in your role, you can actually see the top skills that appear in job postings. Um, they have like an aggregator in them. And it's a great way to look at, again, what some of those hard and soft skills are related to your specific career field. Perfect, perfect. Another, another question about employers, because I know you work with them, right? Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> what are employers saying is most difficult for them to find in new hires? So I know they're top 10, right? But mm -hmm. what is it that they're looking for that they're not able to find more often than not? If anything, maybe there's not any reoccurring anything. You know, it's, it tends to be that they're looking for people that are, I like to think about it less from what they're not seeing to more what they get super excited about. Mm -hmm. And it's really the problem solving communication problem solving. And work. Okay. Um, and I would recommend leveraging um, leveraging those. I think that that question can change so much mm -hmm. from industry to, to industry. industry. Yeah. And yeah. so I, what I like about that, and actually I'm going to start, I think, recommending this to people is that's a great question to ask on your informational interview. Yeah. What do you have a hard time yeah. finding mm -hmm. in Canada? Yeah. And that way you can hear right from their mouth what they're struggling to find mm -hmm. and then you can think about how to pivot um and incorporate that into your yeah. into your pivot. yeah one of the things that i i kept hearing or i keep hearing from career coaches on linkedin and these are in the linkedin live and the linkedin news and stuff like that or get hired is soft skills but which you you mentioned a number of, almost all of those are soft, soft skills that you mentioned um except the quantitative i think all of them were soft skills um and it's funny about putting your finger on the on the soft skill you know depending on the industry you need more soft skills than other industries so you i'm sure it varies from industry to industry yeah okay. and that Next. reminds me actually mm -hmm. remember when you read a job posting that's a wish list that's a dream no one's ever <laughs> going to find someone that matches all of it. If you have at least half, apply. Only focus on what you have. So mm. don't focus when you're writing your cover letter or um, interviewing or tell me about yourself with what you don't have. Think about and only promote what you have. And I can't say that enough. It's a dream wish list. As long as you have half, apply. You're never going to get a job that you don't apply for. And you don't know what they're willing to to give and yeah. take. Ideally, they ranked ordered in the requirements, but also not everyone knows how to write a good job description. And so they might not even know that that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> and so again, just as long as you have at least half, you should be applying. Mm, I love it. Okay, our questions. Let me just look on Facebook. I really need to get active on LinkedIn. Okay, that's one of the comments. So, Therese, you really need to get active on LinkedIn. So you need to replay this, this uh, presentation and follow the steps, okay? And then you need to connect with Maggie directly. And I will post up her contact information on Facebook. I posted it here in, um, in the Zoom. And then everyone who has registered for the Zoom, you will get, even though I posted it there, you will get follow-up. You will get Maggie's contact information because it, it goes out automatically tomorrow. Okay. All right. So now we have our questions. Um, all right. So CDPD, Corona Days Professional Development Group, is, uh, we are here and part of our mission is to serve people uh, from marginalized groups. <clears throat> uh, and we want to help them to increase their access to people, 
right? Teach them how to network, uh, get them connected to resources, training, and hopefully jobs eventually, right? Okay. Would you or have you ever considered yourself to be part of a marginalized group? If so, if you don't mind telling us, if, if yes, uh, how so? Yes. Okay. Um, when I was in college, I went into STEM. And as a female, um, there were not many. In fact, I was frequently the only um, woman in my classes, projects, on buses um, that transported, you know, like around campus. And, you know, there's a lot of promotion these days and encouragement of underrepresented groups to get connected to STEM. And then there's like a lot of push to get into it and great opportunities in the K to 12 area. But then once you're there, and even afterwards, not everyone stays in it. Um, and I think, you know, some of it is because they didn't see themselves in the people that were recruiting. Um, I think for me, it was a confidence thing and that I had to work so hard to even feel like I was in the same, you know, that I deserve to be there. Um, on my own ability. And, um, you know, there would be a lot of, you know, my homework circles were filled with white men that were charging ahead and getting things done. And I was so lost. And, you know, you would ask a question and they would answer it. And then you still have that question. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what did, what did you do? Um, and, you know, I'm, I've since learned that, you know, women actually struggle to see things in 3D more so than men. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was a skill that could be trained. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot back to, well, if I had more support system that, you know, looked like me or could explain things in the way um, that I needed to be explained, would I be building bridges right now? I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the way things worked out. Um, as you can clearly see that I get a lot of um, energy and excitement out of talking and giving and sharing career advice. Um, you know, and then through my work, I've always been driven of who's not using career services. What underrepresented group are they from? Are our resources inclusive? is our advice inclusive? And so that's what motivates me. And you know, something that I said earlier, which was find the people who have the roles that you have because they're gonna give the best advice. Find people that share your multiple identities and go to them for career advice because they're gonna be the best people to give you um, the advice and the support that they need, that you need. And then ask, you know, is there anyone else that I, that you would recommend that I connect with? Um, also professional associations um, that align with identities is a great way to get more connected to your field with other people um, who have some uh, shared uh, identities that you might have. Did you did you catch Monica Morales' live with presentation with us? I Can have I not. Okay. Monica Morales, for anyone who's just logging in, Monica Morales is a civil engineer. And she she now she's first generation college student, college graduate. Uh, she's young. Uh, I think she might be 30 or close, you know, she's young, beautiful woman. And now uh, one of the things that she does now is she goes and she talks to underrepresented um, groups. And of course, she, of course, she wants to encourage more, more female representation in STEM. And she wants to, she, she says, well, look at me. I don't look like the ideal, you know, or the normal STEM person. But she builds bridges. She's a um, she's a water engineer. 
um, in in LA. Uh, please, I'm going to tag you in it, watch it, and, and anyone here, if you've not seen Monica's presentation, if you have children, watch it, even for yourselves. Um, she happened on becoming an engineer because her parent, her mother dealt, her parents dealt blackjack in a casino in Nevada. And an engineer came to her mom's table and her mom said, what do you do for a living? And he said, I'm an engineer. And so she said, well, my daughter is smart. What does she need to do? He says, she needs to be good in, in, in math. I'm sorry, in science. And she said, okay, that she's that. And so she went home and told her daughter to Google it, which she did. And she said, I didn't want to be a robotics person right? She didn't like that, but she understood bridges and water. And, and so she's an engineer today. Uh, I always say her story and people will get tired of me saying it. Uh, if you're on the Zoom and you don't know much about Corona Days Professional Development Group, Monica Morales' story is one of the reasons why we're here. Now, she's not the reason I started the group. I met her through the group, but I started this group. So if there is another Maggie right, who wants to be an engineer. She has a place where she can come, this place, and we can encourage her, and we can try to connect her to resources so that she doesn't say, you know what, this is a white male dominated field, they're not giving me an in, and I'm fighting too much, and walk away. And so Monica is, she exemplifies CDPD in, I always say, and I get emotional about it, I'm a lot emotional, you know, uh, what would have happened to her if her mother did not ask that gentleman what he did for a living, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always say that, or worse, what if he went to her dad's blackjack table? You know, men don't, they don't talk like us, like us women, you know? She probably would not be an engineer today. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and yeah. what's interesting to that is that for the first 11 years in my career in higher ed, I worked at a STEM school <laughs> focused on and really driven to making sure that every student, especially those um, from underrepresented and marginalized backgrounds, mm -hmm. saw a place for themselves in whatever they dreamed their dream to be. Wow. That's a beautiful thing, right? It seems so simple, but it's so difficult to have, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that was our first question. <laughs> our second question, I don't know how old you are, Maggie. You do not have to tell. I don't want to. But knowing what you know now, what would you have, what would you want to say to the 21-year-old Maggie? either about your career journey, your education journey, life lesson, something about your professional and or personal development? Um, one would be that there's no right or wrong amount of time to be in any given job. And so um, I think we, are, it's like built in that like, oh, you have to do a job for two years. You have to give it two years. Well, yeah. that's a really long time. <laughs> um, and especially if you realize that it's not yeah. for you and it's okay to realize this isn't for me. And so, you know, I got my dream job after college. I wanted a rotational leadership program in finance. You know, those were competitive. Mm -hmm hard to find. I got one. I moved to a new state for it um, and cried in my office every single day. And by, um, I, I, I gave my notice four months in. The day after I gave my notice, I had heard that I got into graduate school. I think I probably gave my mother a heart attack um, because I, you know, quit my job without having a solidified plan and moved for grad school and, you know, found work and, and all of that. Um, and so I think that there's all these, well, you're supposed to's, um, and there's no supposed to's. You follow mm -hmm. what makes sense and feels right for you. to you, you know, uh, 
similarly when people are like, well, you're supposed to get married. You're supposed <laughs> to, you know, um, all these things. And I am on my own timeline, yeah. you know, and, and doing my, my own thing. And so I think as hard as it is for there to be no supposed tos, um, like I think write all those supposed tos on a piece of paper and throw them in the trash. And like, <laughs> Love it. Uh, there's another question before I give you my last. So what is, can you give any tips on how much time some people should spend between their job search and their LinkedIn networking? Great question. Now, job search is a full-time job. So um, it kind of depends where and what your current situation is for me to give specifics. But here's what I tell people, because I actually worked with one student and we made a 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. He stayed up way later than I do. Mm -hmm. And we did a mock week and plugged in hours and things to be spending. You know, I would say that You know, if I had five hours in a five hour time frame, I would be spending two hours job um, applying for things that are posted. That might be searching, cover letter, resume tweaking, following up. And then I would spend two hours on um, networking, outreach, following up. Because if you reached out to someone and it's been two weeks, follow up again um, after two weeks, not more than two weeks, not sooner than two weeks, and then wait another two weeks and follow up again. And after those two outreach in four weeks, consider it kind of a dead end, similar with your job search to keep it going. And then I would say that the fifth hour I would spend um, inquiring about opportunities. And so what I mean by that is maybe you've already networked with people and you have some connections in an organization and you're writing to inquire about a job, telling them what you can do for them and why you want to work for them. Or it's an organization that you've followed and would really like to be um, considered for something. Because sometimes it just is you reaching out and inquiring about an opportunity, telling them what you can do for them. The biggest thing throughout all the job search, even though you want a job and you need a job or that this job is going to help you develop A, B, and C, it's not about you. It's about the other person. And that's really hard. Um, and that's why you need your support system to kind of let out what you need and what you want. Um, but you want to always be leading with like what's in it for the other person. And so inquiring about an opportunity, telling them what you can do for them. Um, would be ideal. Okay. All right. If someone wants to work on a timeline, I'm happy to like do some time management and apply some <laughs> of my advising skills uh, to come up with a game plan. All right. Thank you, Maggie. This is our final, which is the kind of question, not a question. What would you like to leave us with tonight? I would say that you're all good enough, if not great enough. And that no matter what you think you have, what you don't think you have, whatever role you're looking for with whatever experiences or education you bring, you're good enough. And someone is very lucky to have you. And the job search process is stressful, anxiety inducing. We can feel fake at times. Um, but it's just know that it's, it's the journey might not look the way you want it to look. It might mean that you need to make some decisions, um, based on your, your situation, but that the power is in your hands. Um, and that, um, there's a lot of opportunity out there and people are going to be excited for you to find them. And, um, CDPD is here to support you and cheer you on. And I think 
when Danette posts, share your wins. Yes. And just saying and replying of something like, I learned to use this keyword. Yes. Or I spent, you know, I did what Maggie said and updated yes. my and um, to keep the momentum. Um, and that, you know, we're all here to help and support um, each other. Um, and we can learn from all directions. And yeah. so just again, you're, you're good enough. You have a lot to offer, um, a lot to learn. I know I've learned and grown the most from people that I've supported along, um, along the years. I love it. Oh, this was amazing, Maggie. All yes, right, awesome. yes. And I know you'll be back. Um, I don't know what you'll do next time, but you'll be back. <laughs> so everyone, thank you all for joining us this evening. If you are not a member of Corona Days Professional Development Group, please join us. If you don't know how to join us, please connect with me. Uh, well, you can find us on Facebook, Corona Days Professional Development Group. Find us on LinkedIn. And if you are on this Zoom, you will get a personal invite from us to join us with the link that leads you right to our page. Thank you. We have a lot coming up for this month of August. And Maggie, thank you for kicking off this August series of all things to get through the job offer. So we have a bunch coming up. And what we want to do is we want to give you enough tools and resources to help you get through the job offer. Okay. All right. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Then bye-bye Maggie. Bye.